So here's the confirmation of how things finished in Group E. Brazil take top spot with seven points after going unbeaten in the group stages for the fourth World Cup in a row. And they will now face Group F runners-up Mexico in the round of 16 in Samara. Switzerland finished runners-up with five points, meaning they will take on the Group F winners, Sweden of all people, in St. Petersburg on the 3rd of July with a place in the quarter-finals up for grabs. Eugene, last night when I asked you, you said you were not convinced by Brazil yet in this tournament. You ch change your opinion now after seeing this assured performance? Uh, I would say they've been solid as a team. Very, very solid, I'd say. But they haven't been that fluid. You know, like the caliber that they got, I, I feel they can be more fluid. Uh, so I think that they're going to get better after every game. So I, they're going to just get, get better now. Just looking at some stats from the match, uh, 13 attempts for Brazil, 6 of them on target. More importantly, restricted Serbia to just one shot on target. Brazil had 56% possession and yet Serbia ran 9 kilometers more than them. This just shows how much work Serbia had to do off the ball and, and they didn't come close. There was just one good team on that pitch yesterday. Yeah, very cultured performance, um, I think, from, from Brazil. Balanced also. I mean, uh, there's some additional statistics to, to share with people about that. The fact that, you know, although they are very dominant, as I'll show shortly, down mm. the left-hand side, the balance of, of the attacks was, uh, was very, very close. It was 40, 42 and 38 percent on the left and right. So, mm. again, although majority of the quality play was down the left side, they did attack from both sides and that's not easy for Serbia because the way that they defend, they have, to, they have to shuffle, they have to slide and they yeah. have to change position. When I was growing up, Eugenson, 1990 onwards is when I started watching the World Cup, the Brazilian teams were always dominated by the attackers. Romario, Bebeto, Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, Kaká. Now, you look at this team, it's a bit of a change. The leader of this team, while people may talk about Neymar, the actual leader of this team is Philippe Coutinho. They've built it around him and perhaps you have to go back to 1982 when that great generation, Socrates, Zico, Falcao, where you see the midfielders dominating uh, a Brazil team. Yeah, uh, uh, Coutinho, he's got the qualities, the ability, he can dribble, he can pass and what he's doing now, he's been dictating the games. Yeah. You could see the, the pass that he's given to the goal, for the goal. So you can see that the quality that he's got in attack, he has a mixed variety of attacks. He can run down the channels, he can play from behind, you know. Th mm. Those are the qualities that they have and they've got Neymar, Gabriel Jesus, William, have all got creativity. So they have got abundance of talents up front. Yes, and perhaps that's why we now see that goal and wonder why, if you're wondering as a Liverpool fan, why did Barca <laughs> play so much for him, now we know. But break this match down for us. Uh, did you spot anything interesting which you felt that uh, shows why Brazil are not just great up top but they're very solid in the centre of the park and at the back as well? Yeah, I think it's important to, to highlight, I've just highlighted the left back here in, in Luis. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcelo went off injured as we know but, but his relationship with Neymar and with Coutinho was very, very strong. Between mm -hmm. them there was a combination of 70 passes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's very, very strong, especially in terms of you know Neymar will be the dominant player mm -hmm. because, of course, Neymar would like to ghost into this position. There, were, there was also a time during the game whereby Coutinho, many, many occasions, he's picking the ball up here. He, he received the ball in this area over 20 times. Okay. Now, during this time, of course, Luis will be a little bit spread out, but this is very deep and very wide mm. for a number 10. Perhaps also because Marcello wasn't there. Yeah. Also, yeah. potentially. I think Luis, he can't get forward enough, so maybe he will roll in. But again, that's the balance of the team. That's how they're playing. Mm. There's good rotation where Neymar, there's a little bit of the combination there. But I think what's, what's key to highlight also with, with Philip Coutinho is, for me, when I think about a number 10, I don't think of him in that more, mm. that role, sorry. Mm. But then, he's, I also don't think of him as a, a Lampard, Gerrard, number 8 type, yeah. type of player. So, as I mentioned off I think he's more of a, an eight and a half. Okay. <laughs> he's a little bit in between the two. He has tremendous quality and he's certainly starting to come into it. But just to add to that, he was actually seventh mm -hmm. down the list of Brazilian players in total number of passes. So, he is dominant, but the statistics are not really showing he's that dom dominant. But what he does is really, really effective.